Okay, I recently started posting the tutorials to uh, the pop game I've been working on. Uh, visit filmsbychris.com forward slash POP for more information on that. And uh, some of the viewers asked that I do a Blender Basics video, just going over the basics, which I've done in the past, but I think last time I did it was probably 2.4, which the interface completely changed when we got to Blender 2.5. Currently, I am working with, uh, I'll show you here, Blender 2.60. 2.61 just came out, but the game I created, I'm creating, is going to be using Blender 2.60, and the interface really shouldn't change all that much in other 2.6s. And if you're running 2.5, it's going to be rather similar as well. Um, so I'm just going to go over some basic stuff. First thing I'm going to do is something that I've known about, a little plugin I've known about, but I never remember to turn it on when I'm doing these tutorials. And uh, so we'll start off with uh, user preferences here. So I'm going to go up to File, User Preferences. And you can see we're in add-ons here, and you can search through the add-ons by typing stuff here. And what I'm going to look for is, I'm going to type in key, and here you can see there's one that says 3D view uh, screencast keys. You can click on it for more information. Um, basically, I'm going to check and enable that. And what that's going to do is what I'm working in Blender here, it's going to show down the corner here what keys I'm pressing, which makes it better for viewers like you. I'm going to save that as a default so I don't forget in the future to put that on. So now you can see if I... Uh, let's see, hit G. Oh, I might have to still enable it. I, let's see, here we go, screencast. So, what I just did here, uh, in, if I hover my cursor over to 3D view. Now, different keys work different depending on what window you're hovered over here. So, I'm going to hover over the main window here, and I'm going to hit N, which brings up the side panel, which is settings basically for this 3D view. And I'm going to start display. So, now... If I right click, as you just see down in the corner there, and in Blender you do by default uh, choose select objects by right clicking them. Um, and I hit N again, as you can see down in the corner there, to get rid of that side tab. Uh, and that might be confusing because you're probably used to left clicking stuff. And there is a way to flip flop that. But really, I recommend, and most people who are used to Blender will recommend getting used to working with it that way. It's a little uncomfortable at first, but once you get it, it's very smooth. Um, so, I'm going to right click that. You can say I can also right click my camera here. By default, in Blender, you're going to have a, a cube object, a camera object, and a lighting object. Um, I'm going to right click the cube here. And there are three main keys we're going to look at today to, um, that you're going to use all the time. G, which stands for grab. When you do that, you can grab and move an item. Right click to put it down somewhere or actually left click to leave it somewhere, right click will drop it back where it originally was. Um, so that's G, once an item is selected, and then I can left click to drop it there. Also R, which is rotate. And you also have S, which is for scale. So again, the main keys you're going to use all the time, G for grab, R for rotate, and S for scale. Now, um, you can also center click, that's pressing down on the, if you have a scroller wheel on your mouse, which most people do, click on that and drag, you can drag your view around here. Also by default, if you're running on a keyboard that has a number pad off to the side, the different numbers on the number pad, which act different than the numbers on your top row, uh, these number pad uh, keys will usually in most cases bring you to certain views, like 7 will bring you straight to the top. Uh, one on the number pad brings you a front view, and three brings you to a side view. Zero will bring you to where your camera is, which is when you render something out you're going to be viewing. Um, you can also hit, um, let's see if I go to top view. If I hit four and six, it rotates it around uh, steadily on that. So you can, you can drag with the mouse, but if you want to keep a certain angle, you can do uh, four and six. Uh, 8 and 2 go the other way. Uh, also, you'll notice right now we have a 3D view. Let me, I'm going to hit delete with that cube selected. Spacebar brings up your menu here, which I'm going to talk more about in a minute, but what I'm going to type here is cube, and I'm going to add in a cube. So here's a cube, and you also have three different, well, more than three different, but three main views you're going to be working with in Blender. Wireframe, solid, and textured. Uh, if we go to wireframe, you can see the wireframe of the cube. 
This is great sometimes when you're editing, you can see all your objects through one another. Once again, I'm going to hit one on the number pad. I'm in the front view. And you can see that we have a 3D view here. You can see the depth of that box. Well, if we hit five, it kind of turns off that perspective mode. I don't think that's actually what it's called. That's why I refer to it as. And so everything's flat. That's good for when you're aligning stuff. We can hit five on the number pad again and go back to our 3D view, uh, our perspective mode. Um, so I hope that makes sense. You also get this nice little grid when you're trying to line things up when you turn that off using the number pad 5. Um, also, when you're working in a 3D world, you have three axes. 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 I never remember. You got uh, X, which is left and right, Z, which is up and down, and Y, which is front and back. So one, I'm going to hit 5 to turn on our perspective mode here again. And if I hit G to grab, you can see I move it all around. But if I hit X, it locks it on the X axis. I can move my mouse up and down, and it's not going to move the box up and down. If I hit Z, I can now move the box up and down, but I can't move it left and right. And if we go into a side view to where you can see it better. So G to grab, X moves on the X axis. If I hit Y, it moves on the Y axis, or Z. And then I was going to get to Y is front and back. So if you need to lock it in, so if you're trying to line things up, you're going to use that a lot. And the same goes for rotation and scale. If I hit R to rotate it, I can rotate it in all different directions. But if I hit Z, it's going to rotate it only on the Z axis. X only on the X axis. And Y will only be on the Y axis. And same for scaling. If I hit S and scale it, you can see it gets bigger and smaller. Well, I can hit Z and it will scale it only on the Z axis or shrink it only on the Z axis. If I hit X... Same thing, only on the X. If I hit Y, it does it only on the Y. Um, so like I said, I'm just going over some basics here. And, and those are a lot of your manipulation. Also, you have different layers here. You can put different objects on different layers. To move an object to another layer, you can right-click an object, hit M, and then choose what layer you want to move it to. And you can see, if you look down here, what object, what layers there are objects on. We just moved that cube to layer 2. So we can click there and there's layer two. The reason it's showing objects on layer one is because we have our camera and our light source on camera on layer one. Um, okay, I was also talking before. I just hit one on the number pad to go into front view. If I hit spacebar, it brings up this nice little menu here, which you did not have in 2.4. And this menu is great. Because if you're familiar with Blender, let's say especially an older version of Blender, and you know what you want to do, but you don't know where it is in the interface, lots of times just typing it in here, you can find what you're looking for. Like if I want to add a cube, I can type cube, and there's add cube. If I want to add a sphere, I can type in, start typing sphere, and you can see I can add an icosphere, or a UV sphere, or a surface sphere, or I can two sphere, which is a whole nother thing. Um, I can go plane, and you can see I have add plane, and import images as plane, which is actually another add-on that I have enabled. Uh, so you may not have that by default. Um, so definitely this menu here, you can hit your space bar and you can scroll through a whole bunch of stuff. You can also see um, over here to the right what shortcut keys are for certain things. Uh, so you can learn what they are and you don't have to use that menu. If you are used to Blender 2.5 or sorry 2.4 and you like the old menu style, if you hit Shift A, there's that menu for adding objects. Um, I don't like that as much. Some people do. Uh, I think search boxes are cer certainly a lot faster. Certain things aren't in that search box, though, at least not last I checked. Like, uh, I type an empty. I can't add an empty. I can add an empty keying set. I don't even know what that is. So to add an empty object, I have to sh hit Shift A. What an empty object is, is basically an empty object is something you're not going to see when you render or if you're playing a game in Blender, but you can add objects. Um, uh, options to it, make it generate other things or affect other objects, but you'll never actually see it when you're rendering or when you're playing a game. Um, over here, you have uh, different tabs for different things, world views like your sky, uh, different types of lighting. You also have you know, your light source here, which you can affect under the light and tab. Once again, I'm not going to go into detail on these. This is just a quick overview. Watch this video a few times if you have to to get stuff. Um, uh, let's see. Also, if you hover over any 
one of these windows because you got this this window over here this window over here this window up here down here so let's say this there's a lot going up here this is um, showing me all the objects in my project here and I can scroll like so but if I hover the cursor over that and hit control up it makes that window full screen and I hit control down and it shrinks it back up so but that you have to remember that it affects different depending on where your cursor is it's affecting that window also, you can grab these little, uh, little lines here in the corner to drag a window and create a new window. So if I want to split a window, and this is one of the great things about Blender, everything is completely customizable. You can have as many different windows as you want. So when you drag a window like that, you can see it generates a new window of the same type. Well, you can drop this little menu bar down here and changes. I can make this a 3D view and add in our cube there. So now you can see the cube in all these views. Um, you can also uh, split views if you go like so. You, you can resize it once you get that two bar just by uh, two arrows by going over the middle between two uh, windows here, two frames. We can uh, right click here and we can say split area and you can draw a line where you want to split, which is kind of an older style of way of doing things. But they added it back in and it definitely is more comfortable in some ways to be able to do that. If I want to join windows, they have to line up properly. I can't join these two windows. See, I try to join and they're not going to join because they're not lined up properly. But I can join this one to this one up here. And uh, if I was to actually split these windows again and line them up properly, I can now join these windows like so and like so. And I can join it back down like so. Um try to think what other basics are there you have different uh, presets here uh, for different setups that basically people have created different windows for different uh, things you're working on whether maybe you're doing video editing in blender 3d compositing animation um, you can also uh, get to those by hitting control left or right and you can go through all those or just click this drop down um, Let's join this window back here. Uh, if you do split the windows and you have a different setup you like by default, once you have it set up, you can go File, uh, Save User Settings, and that will allow you, every time you open it, will regenerate those settings the way you have things displayed by default. Um, rendering stuff. You have different options down here for different formats and frames. That's not stuff that... I mean, that's stuff you're going to have to go, but it's that kind of stuff we go over in almost every video, and there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, trying to think. Those are the basics. Mm. You can, uh, you have your timeline down here for different animations. You can left-click and drag like so to go through different portions. You're not really seeing anything animating up here, so let's, let's animate something real quick. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to hit um, shift left arrow. And that will jump us, in this case, to the beginning uh, frame, because it actually jumps to the first keyframe, but we don't have any keyframes set. So what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to, with this object selected, let's delete this empty. I'm going to hit I, and I'm going to set a keyframe. You can set a keyframe for location, rotation, animation, location and rotation, location and scaling. I, for the most part, I do all three, but it all depends on what you're trying to do for animation. There's other options here, but this is the one I use the most. So now that frame right there will all that cube will always be right there just like that in that frame. Now if I hit shift and I hit um, up arrow, we can jump 10 frames at a time. And in most cases you're going to be rendering things out at 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second. You can also just hit um, left and right arrow and go one frame at a time. But we'll go here to frame 60. We'll rotate this cube by hitting R, rotating a little bit and hitting I and setting a new keyframe. Now, if I hit Shift and left arrow, we're back at the first frame, I can hit Alt-A and it shows our animation. And the animation kind of ends because we don't have anything past that point. We can once again hit Shift, um, up arrow, and get to another frame that we want to see set a keyframe at. And we can hit Scale and scale this up and rotate it. And we'll hit I and lock in that keyframe. Now if I hit Alt-A, it's starting to play where we just were, so there's no animation past that if you're watching the line down at the bottom of the screen. But when we get back to being boom, it rotates, then it starts getting bigger and rotating 
based on our keyframes. So that's how you animate stuff. Well, um, you know, I only have 15 minutes on YouTube for tutorials. And really, I hope that's just enough to get you started.